Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we've got a piece of test equipment to have a look at, and it's a fairly old piece of equipment, and it's this one here on the table. Now, I don't have a great deal of information about this thing. It was obtained fairly cheaply. Someone was selling it on eBay quite a while ago, so I just got hold of it because it looked fairly interesting. So uh, let's uh, have a look and uh, open it up and see what's actually inside, and also so we can work out what it was actually used for. So here it is, it's a wooden case. Got the uh, plate on the front here, so it's got this round uh, black piece here. And if you look on the other side, uh, you see it's also got one of those there as well. It appears to be some sort of plastic type material. Two hinges here, the lid for this is actually missing. It would have had a wooden lid, same as the actual body of the thing. So unfortunately that is missing. And again, you've got the catch here on the front, which would have secured the lid in position. Now I'll just have a look at this plate here on the front. So here's the uh, plate on the front of the device, so it's a portable test meter and it works on uh, various voltages here, so 110, 220 and 440. Model is uh, either 1.2 or possibly 12, that's a bit grubby there. And uh, there's the rest of the information as you can see there. Made by Sangamo Western and uh, made in England as well. And uh, what this appears to be is a electricity meter but as it says here, it's portable and would be presumably used for testing other electricity meters. So here's the top of the unit. And uh, we've got four terminals here. These large ones you can just unscrew, as do the smaller ones. These uh, particular large ones are marked CURR, so presumably for current. And the same here. And then these two, which you may not be able to see particularly well there, are marked POT, or for potential, presumably. Got this little knob here which can be turned from the uh, two voltages there, so 220 over that side and 110 over there. And I uh, say so it does just uh, rotate around over there, and of course uh, in the other direction. At the top here, we've got this large knob which has a dot in this position here. There is a little mark on the side here to presumably indicate where it's set to. And then around here, we've got the other options which are. 1, 2.5, 5, 10, 25 and 50 and again that just uh, clicks around. It's a fairly stiff uh, switch but that's sort of clicking around to the various positions. Two buttons here which uh, possibly will sort of zero the uh, readings in the middle there as that's not uh, quite on zero and if that's pressed or that one's pressed then it will sort of move that back to zero if it's knocked out of place. And then we've got this little thing here which uh, looks like something you just put a ceiling wire or something through on a hole next to it, so again not too clear what those would be for. Now so this is a wooden case and it's quite a large thing. It's also very heavy. I mean this must weigh uh, it's in the measure of 10 kilograms or something, sort of 20 pounds or more. So uh, definitely not a lightweight piece of equipment. And it's got this uh, leather strap here over the top for carrying and so it would have had a lid on there same style as the casing and if it's up to the standard of most of this style of equipment it probably would have had the instructions printed inside the lid and unfortunately we don't have the lid so we don't have any information on exactly how this would be used now here's the actual dial on the front here so this is in some ways similar to an actual electricity meter so you've got the uh, various units, tens, hundreds and thousands and whatever marked in there and we've also got dials for tenths and also one hundredths and then plus we've got this uh, piece around the outside which is presumably for something uh, even lower so uh, presumably one of those is going to be one of these or something similar and I so say the needle there doesn't quite go back to zero although when I got this it was sort of over here and uh, pressing one of these did sort of move it back into the zero position Quite why there's two buttons, it's uh, as yet a mystery. But uh, say it certainly seems to be some sort of electricity meter, presumably for testing or confirming others. In fact, it's portable, would suggest it was for use sort of out in the field, as it were. And terminals there to connect various things to. Now, in the absence of any other information, we're going to have to open this. And there's nothing on the top here, as you can see, that suggests it would be uh, on the screwable here. The size are just the timber casing there. It has suffered a bit in various places. You can see where the veneer is peeling off, revealing the plywood underneath. But uh, on the bottom we've got four rubber feet and four holes where screws would go and for some reason we've only got two screws in it, so one at each corner. 
presumably they would have been screws there eventually, they've obviously got lost or it fell out or someone took them out. So we'll uh, undo those and uh, see what that will release. So there's just normal screws with a washer underneath there, so nothing uh, too surprising about those. And the feet presumably just uh, held on with screws as well, so we'll leave those in place. And now the question is, this may lift out of here. Right, well it seems to move, so let's just put it down flat and uh, extract the middle. I say this is a fairly heavy item, so here's all the weight is going to come out with the actual inner side part. So that is just an empty wooden box, as you can see in there. It's got those two holes which have been cut into the sides there. And then they've been filled in with these, uh, what seems to be some sort of plastic material on either side. Not entirely clear why uh, you would cut holes and then uh, fill them in again. As you see in there, there's nothing else in there other than the wooden box itself. Bit of uh, material missing there on the side there. But all we can see with that. And then we have the hole inside, which is in this frame. So at the bottom here we've got a whole load of terminals there with uh, various wires attached. This uh, looks to be some kind of transformer, one of those sort of toroidal varieties. And then at the top here, let's, uh, let's turn that around. You can see there where the uh, two discs in the side sort of would have been. So this is matte and that's uh, more shiny. So at the top here we've got what appears to be basically an electricity meter and we've got the rotating disc in here and a bit of other components as well and we've got the wires and things going up to the terminals on the top there and also others on the side over here. So basically we've got a transformer in the bottom with a whole pile of uh, different terminals and tappings coming off of that and what sort of uh, appears to be an electricity meter in the top. place now if we actually rotate the uh, disc yeah so the disc is tied directly to that middle pointer and of course on most electricity meters one revolution of the disc is a very small unit and uh, as we can see there if we're rotating that around the pointer will go around there so that's basically graded from zero round to 0.9 and also sort of one revolution and then this dial here at the bottom which uh, isn't actually uh, it just says revolutions at the bottom there, so basically one of the outer is effectively one on this pointer here, and then presumably ten of those is going to be one on the dial to the left of that. Yeah, so the top here, one of the outer is one of those divisions, and then one of those revolutions is one of these divisions, and then presumably the uh, others here will also move. If you look at the red one, it is slowly moving around there, and that's presumably one hundredths of units as in uh, kilowatt hours, and then that'll be the tenths, singles and tens. Now uh, one of these buttons presumably does reset, let's try that one. Right, well that's going to do the basically the large point and the revolutions at the bottom, and then presumably that one will do the red one at the side there. Right, so that makes sense then, so the top button does the top which is the units and then the bottom one does the two there and the pointer which is revolutions. So this is inside the uh, upper half here, this is the uh, front here and this is the bottom down there. So uh, this top piece just essentially looks to be just like a normal electricity meter so we've got the rotating disc here and there's the uh, spindle that goes straight through to the pointer on the top and uh, we've got the various gears and things in the top here which uh, operate the pointers and so on and then the buttons come through on this mechanism here, which actually just resets that to the zero position. So if we just turn that around there and then press there, you'll see the disc will basically come back to the zero position there. And uh, on the side here, just got the wires coming to these uh, terminals on the top. These on this side are considerably large, these are the ones that mark current, so you certainly would expect them to be the larger size. And then the potential ones here, or the voltage, again, got very thin wires, but again, that's uh, 
pretty much what you expect because the uh, current obviously needs large wires for carrying the current. But of course voltage only needs very thin wires, it's only basically just a uh, potential difference between the two terminals. So I've got quite a few wires coming off of here and also got this little uh, terminal strip here, all of which go down to the back there. So here's a look just under the top plate, you can see the gears and things in there for the pointers on the top there. This is the reset piece from the button just above there. And you can see that all of these uh, connections here, they just go straight through onto the top for the terminal here. That little knob thing actually comes through on the back of this plate, we'll have a look at that in a moment. And then these are the current ones, which they just come straight through onto these very large cables on uh, each one. And um, we can just see through the back there the uh, additional gearing for the pointers and things at the top. Now this is that voltage selector switch on the top which has the two positions and it basically operates on these contacts here. So as we rotate that, see it will just press against uh, those in two different arrangements. And this is the other side, so you can see there it's just a question of those contacts either opening or closing against these pins here. So you select one or the other voltages on that, so uh, that's in sort of one position. And as it turns around, it just basically moves some of them on and others off. So uh, fairly straightforward two position switch there. This is a view of the back, and again this is the other reset button here. So as you press that, it just moves that mechanism into zero those pointers at the top. That's the other little thing on the top there which uh, appears just to be a sort of a tying off point, possibly some sort of calibration lock or something similar. It doesn't actually go through to anything so it is just a metal post in the top with a hole through and it has a little hole uh, next to that for whatever reason. And on the back here we've just got this uh, laminated core here which is for the actual metering part and you can see some of the other wires coming down to this piece here which is marked on the side between F and S so it's fast and slow so some kind of uh, adjustment or calibration item there and uh, not a whole lot on the other side so it's just basically the uh, frame there which is iron or steel or something similar and then we can see there's two large cables coming down from the current terminals and on the top here we've got this uh, round switch which says marked with this either a dot or possibly zero and then it goes sort of one 2.5, 5, 10, 25 and 50 and that actually goes through the top plate there and it's actually this uh, shaft here so it goes all the way down to the bottom and then it goes into these terminals so if we just have a uh, quicker look in there. Now the shaft end is actually here and as it rotates uh, you can see these seven contacts here some of which are in the open position and some are closed and if I actually rotate the thing on the top there you'll see that this part will basically move here and then these contacts will open and close in various different combinations so there you go and I think these pieces here are just for a detent on the switch so it sort of springs apart and then will just click into a specific position also representing the different arrangements so these are just selecting different tappings from this large transform in the bottom in uh, various different combinations and we have a look on the side there see the wiring is just coming down with this yellowy coloured insulation also got the two wires there from the current terminals and uh, if we look on the other side of that so again here's the actual switching mechanism and we've got all of the various taps coming up here which go into the transformer. And on this side, you see this uh, set of wires here is actually what's going up to the two current terminals on the top. So those sort of very large ones basically come off, off to here and then going into the side. And we've got our various other tappings coming out here, all of which go to that switching mechanism at the bottom. This is a bit from the bottom, and let's say there's all those connections there. There's a block of wood here which is just holding the transformer in position. A nut there which has been screwed through to secure it in place and then there's all the other tappings which just go around to the other side and then this is the bottom of the uh, switching mechanism there you can see the various contacts all lined up down there and that's what comes through to the front here for the various selections on the front 
and as expected there should be four screws in the bottom here. I've got the uh, only three of the threaded inserts, one appears to be missing, so presumably someone took the screws out or lost them or they just fell out from age or whatever else. Now as well as the two main wires coming down to that transformer and switch assembly, we've also got these two thin black wires here, which are coming back from one of these terminals on this side, and then the other one actually goes round underneath and connects to one of the others. And uh, these actually come up here onto the uh, metering part itself. I'll ask a little uh, coil or winding arrangement around the bottom here. So presumably this is some kind of current transformer, so depending on what current you can put in, you can uh, sort of change the ratio of it to obtain a super reading on the metering part at the top. And the uh, voltage inputs, or the potential ones, which were these over this side, don't actually go down to the bottom at all, they just basically connect into the little coils on the back here, and therefore there's no uh, actual switching done there, apart from on this little switch here, which just goes between the two voltages that we saw previously. And again, that's just picking uh, two combinations of these, so there's probably two coils, one it's either putting them in parallel or series or some similar equivalent arrangement. Now these shiny patches are where there's some varnish applied, so it would appear that it was put in the outside case without those two holes on the sides covered, and it was sprayed and the varnish obviously came through like that. And then subsequently the uh, actual covers were placed over, and I can't really see the reason for that. I mean, there is a screw there which again holds that transformer in place, but uh, as this whole assembly just slides into the case, there isn't really any need to access that from outside. And on this side, well, there's nothing at all, it's just the plain wooden side of the casing there. So a uh, bit of a mystery why it's got those two black things on the side, unless that case was made for another model which had some other arrangement in the bottom which needed to be accessed. So that's uh, put back in the case there, just so it's two or should be four screws to fix it in the bottom. And it certainly seems to be some sort of meter for testing other electricity meters. I say I couldn't really find any other information about the thing, and unfortunately the instructions were probably in the lid, which is now missing. So if you've got any information on that thing, or how it was used, or even when it was made, or whatever, do put it in the comments section below. But uh, that's pretty much it for this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.